coming up on Street Hospital. Sounds like it was a very first time drinking. <laughs> but I'm actually more concerned about the one in the back. It's the GHB. Oh. There it is. Two, maybe going one. Oh, we've done quite a bit of blood, but no patient yet. Yes. Come, come this way. It's been a night for blood. All over New Zealand, the weekend's the time to hit the town and hit the booze. He's had about a litre of vodka. That's what I'm talking about. Hitting it hard and each other. Some party animals are getting boozed, getting hurt, and they're clogging the emergency department. They end up lining the corridors and trolleys waiting to sober up. Wellington free ambulance paramedics are fighting back. On Friday and Saturday nights, ambulances parked in Wellington's party zone become makeshift hospitals. At the street hospital base, paramedics treat the injured where they can on the spot. Thank you, Mr. Paramedic. Typical Wellingtonians, very friendly. Will they make a difference to the binge drinking culture in central Wellington? Can they stop the smashed and trash piling into the hospital's emergency department? And how will our paramedics cope, keeping a straight face when everyone else is off theirs? Come to town with us. The start of university means town's been busy for the street hospital team. 19 year old Braden expects tonight will be no exception. This week it's been the university's orientation week. It's been pretty crazy every single night. New students face a whole raft of new experiences, as Jay knows firsthand. When I came down the first year, I'd only turned 18 a few weeks beforehand and there were some that were turning 18 during the O week and a lot of them haven't drunk before. So if we come across that sort of thing, it's a matter of making sure that we get them, either get them to a point where they're safe, they can safely get home, or getting to an environment where they are safe. Ex-military man Nick knows from experience what's going to be in hot demand. Yeah. Do you want to grab us some vomit balls? The two things you never want to run out on a street hospital are gloves and vomit balls. The students are back in town to party first, study later. It's a learning curve officer in charge, Craig, seen before. Traditionally, we get people preloading before they go out. Have a good night, guys. Be safe. There's going to be so many freshers out tonight. We're going to go through so much fluid. Caffeine dies, alcohol keeps going, no food. So I expect it's going to be a busy night. So who can drive under lights? You, me. So that's all two of us, right? <laughs> so we've got two vehicles tonight. Experienced paramedic Brendan will be clinical lead tonight, overseeing any medical procedures performed by the younger medics. Responding to an 18-year-old female, uh, conscious and breathing, vomiting blood. Brendan and Jay's first emergency call is to some student accommodation downtown. I'm Jay from the ambulance. This is Brendan. So, what's been happening? Vomiting blood. Yeah. Is it just what's in the bucket, or was there more than? This is what I'd expect from No Week. Uh, the first time with the students out drinking uh, can usually be a bit messy. What you can quite often find is when you're vomiting, sometimes it can cause a little tear or a little bleed. She was completely conscious, talking to us, just felt terrible. So we weren't going to send her to hospital, we weren't going to give her any fluids. But you have been this drunk before? <laughs> no. You started drinking recently. This is what it feels like when you drink too much. Yeah. Treatment is sleep and maybe a Powerade or something tomorrow, a pie. It sounds like it was a very first time drinking. Yeah, it does sound like it was a very first time drinking. It was kind of, it was a little bit of that desperation, can you make it go away? Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. this is what happens. Heading back to base, Brendan and Jay crossed with Craig and second year student Holly, responding under lights to a police referral for a collapsed woman. The night is off to a flying start. That, that changes the siren. Does it? Yeah. No! It does. <gasps> How did I even know that? Excuse me. Can't you get that in the event of your course? Yeah. Quarterly 9-3 locations. 
Africa. The young woman is a student and has ended up dazed and confused in a park on the edge of town. So there's a young lady who's intoxicated. She hasn't had a drink for a few hours, but she's been lying outside and um, quite cold. Right the back there, Holly. Yeah, Hypothermia is a real concern, so the medics decide to take this park sleeping student back to Street Hospital where she can be properly assessed. What we're looking uh, at doing is sorry. we think it might be a good idea to pop some fluids in here, so that's going to involve putting an IV in your arm. Brendan is clinical lead here tonight, so he gets kind of final say over all of us. Alright, so just a sharp scratch here. He did have to oversee me doing the IV, but he was happy with me doing it. Went flawlessly, which I was quite happy about. Outside the ambulance, a bar owner from across the road is called for help. Someone's collapsed in the alleyway, so Jay and Brendan investigate on foot. Is, are you, is yeah, it the yeah, back of the... Bar that you just come out here I see. Dump water. Awesome. OK, thank you for that. You're right there. Your phone's just under your foot, right? Oh, do you want your phone? Oh, look, it goes up the other side. Our patient, who appeared to be absolutely trolleyed, has decided he doesn't want to talk to us, and we're not going to run after him down the road. So we'll see if we see him later on. At the moment, he's taken off, so left his phone behind. We're not the cops, we're not going to chase after people. Thanks to Holly's IV, this park sleeper has warmed up and sobered up enough to go home. Although now, there's another problem. You're back. Bag. Okay, that's one thing that I didn't think about. Where's your, where's your hand bag? Um, what was in it? Step down. Well, um, you're very welcome. Just make sure you pop into a taxi, eh? Yeah, we'll do that. Alright, take care. Guy down Blair Street, covered in blood, and there's blood all down the street, so we're going to go scope it out. I have no idea who he is, but there's, there's like a trail of blood leading all the way up to him, you can't miss him. Uh, nah, it could lack or bleed a lot, but I don't think I've ever seen like a trail. It looks like the person has punched a window and is losing a lot of blood. Jay and Braden need to find whoever it is, and fast. Hey mate, anyone covered in blood anywhere? We've done quite a bit of blood, but no patient yet. We're just going to track it around a bit and see if we can find anyone. With this level of blood loss, the patient's injuries are likely to be severe. So it turns out that our patient has um, arrived at the street hospital base. This a little come, come this way. I thought, I thought you were dressed up. I hope so. Whatever you want. <laughs> So, what? You punched a window. That's not smart. Uh, well, the bouncer kicked me up in there. He just said, him. Hey, man. Hey, I'm all good. Don't worry about me. Hello. <laughs> what have you done there? Oh, Bit of a beauty, a little, eh? Little cut, you. Yeah. You had to, to be very light clothes. <laughs> like, I was out to pull in Wellington, OK? Come on. So besides that cut there in your thumb, is there anything on the other, under, oh, yeah, knuckles and... There's yeah, not there's nothing. One under there as well. Yeah. So oh, yeah, that one, one, that one, and that one is going to need what suturing. So are you all good if we yeah. run you up to the hospital to get that sorted? I'm going to sit there for like 12, four yeah. hours waiting. In no, the way you, you won't be reason. You won't be waiting for that. Oh, you smashed me out, stitched me up, very big to lay down. I've seen yeah, so much bigger cuts than that. There's quite a pool of blood down there, broken window, and quite a pool of blood down his trousers. Without proper treatment, and soon, the man risks permanent damage to his hand. In hospital, the deep cuts will be stitched up, and he may need ongoing physio. Orientation week is in full swing, and the casualties keep coming. Paramedic Brendan and second year paramedic Nick are responding to a call on Bullcock Street. 18 year old female unconscious, breathing. Oh, 
How much alcohol has she had tonight? We're not 100% sure, but at least a bottle of wine, I would okay. say, and maybe more. She fell on the couch, couch, and that was the last, really, she spoke. Well done. And just lay yourself down. Well done. It wasn't her house where she passed out, so we needed to get her back to her house. We thought an office chair was the best way. So that's what we do. We push her on an office chair about like two or three it blocks. So bad. And well, she was crying on my chair. The police told us to keep pushing her home, so we kept pushing her home. And then this bar staff came out and were like, "She's not responsive. You need to call the ambulance." Yeah. After yeah, they spoke yeah. to us, we're kind of like, "Okay, yeah, call call the ambulance. Like it needs to be done." We can either head to the hospital. Or we can head down to our little field hospital that we've got set up down at the end of Courtney Place yeah. and we could rehydrate with some IV fluids Honestly, and give her some deep strokes. Okay. Honestly, I've seen her there before. I know exactly what to do, so I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah. 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 Couple of extra perspectives on this. Sure. I honestly think oh, I hello. think you should be forcing to this box. She's adamant she's, she's well, fine, and I would just rather be safe than sorry, that's all. And feel free to open the back door if you get more comfortable yeah. doing that. I think it would be wise for her to come down with us. If she doesn't get any better, we'll take her to Wellington. And, and that's what I'm thinking is going to be the best stage, but looking at her vitals. Yeah. Right yeah. Having broken a consensus, Brendan and Nick take the office chair casualty and her helpful friends back to Street Hospital base. We're just heading down to somebody who has been bottled, apparently. Yeah, busy little night. Clear 815 and responding to that green job on Toy Streets. You don't shine a light in your eyes. <laughs> yep. Sweet as, and it doesn't feel sore around here. Were you knocked out at all? No, I just got in a little fight, got bottled. And see so he had a bottle, and then he just smacked me in the face with it. The blood hit my, my top when he got bottled, and um, I was like, oh god, like, so I just called an ambulance and like, waited for it to break up, kind of thing. And I'm not going to lie, this is going to sting a bit. The man has a deep gash on his cheek and is very lucky he didn't lose his left eye. The face is packed with blood vessels, making it difficult for Brayden and Craig to clean the wound up. Do you think there'll be a scar? Um, maybe. That's going to need stitches um, in ED, but it's not a job that requires an ambulance transportation up here through Frontline or us. The bloody young man is going to hospital with his friend in a cab. It's um, probably our biggest blood loss tonight. It's been so a night for blood. After a bag of fluids, the office chair casualty is sobered up enough for the medics to decide if she's OK to carry on with the trip home. To make extra sure she gets there this time, they offer to take her there in the ambulance. Were you guys the one on the wheelie chair? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, that's the one. It's way quicker than an office chair, there's more room for selfies. Craig and Holly have been called to a job on the waterfront. A woman has been seen wandering around in the traffic. Police were called and they've had trouble restraining her. Okay. I've lost track of how many jobs I've done there. We haven't been able to get any words out of her. She is, you'll see, she her eyes are kind of half rolling in her, in her head. Well done. You're okay. You're okay. So you, didn't, you haven't got anything out of her? Nothing. She's literally not said a word. I reckon it's GHB. The drug GHB can cause agitation and visual disturbances. Mixing it with alcohol is dangerous, leading to breathing difficulties, vomiting and a very deep sleep. A lethal combination. It's getting late and things seem to be calming down for the team. Brendan and Braden take a quick breather before the GHB patient arrives. Nobody says thank you enough to the people who are taking care of us. You, Very kind to you. You put your time, you put your time, your precious time into other people you're giving. And that means you've, you, you're really rich, man. You're the wealthiest. That's awesome. Thank you. On the way back, there's been no change in the girl's condition. 
clinical lead, Brendan, steps in immediately. So, what's the story? It's been a pretty crazy night from the get-go, really. With a bit of luck, that'll be our last patient for the night, and we can head home and get some small hours of sleep before heading back to the day job. Wishful thinking, the night's about to get crazier. The young man who was talking to the medics moments earlier is viciously attacked and knocked to the ground. Breathing. Senior paramedic Brendan is called over, leaving the younger medics to help the GHB patient. A uh, vehicle to triage base, uh, status two, maybe going one. Sorry, hold your down, we need this. No, I think we might have a cut address. We know him from school, but he did nothing wrong. The guy just threw a punch in, he went down. By the time we turned to see who it was, he took off, he just sprinted off. Can you unlock the vehicle? Braden. Right. That's all right, he's waking, waking up a bit. It's all right, take, take that off, take it off, just relax. I'm just going to pop a little little cannula in your nose. It's not going to hurt, it's going to tickle. It's going to come around your ear. Just relax, buddy, relax. That's all right. Good work. So it was a punch straight to the to the to the jaw. Yeah. Had the back of his head on the way down. The young man regains consciousness as the frontline emergency medics arrive. Brendan fills them in. He's been assaulted, hit, and then he's fallen back down and uh, hit hit the back of his head on the ground. But he's now it's just concussion that we're looking at now. Yeah. Um, so I've just chucked a collar on him. But I'm actually more concerned about the one in the back. It's a GHB, a oh, query GHB overdose. In the back of the ambulance, there's a police officer holding him down, and I'm more worried about that than this. The possible GHB overdose is resisting all attempts by the emergency frontline paramedic to assess her condition. With concern mounting, she'll be taken straight to ED. The young man who was assaulted is in a relatively stabilised state now but will be taken to hospital for x-rays and a concussion check. One of his schoolmates will go with him to keep him company. Very volatile this evening. It's getting a bit crazy. Alcohol's doing all sorts of wonderful, stupid things to these um, people who have never drunk it before. That'll be my third R26 assault job. Two brawlers have both come off second best. One tries to hide behind a bouncer who insists he needs medical treatment. Go and grab yourself a seat, eh? Hey? Yeah, we'll clean you up. Do you mind if I just just have a quick look? Is that all good? So, all right. So just open your mouth, just... I'm Ginger, I'm an ex-Marine. I can fight when I want to. No, I, I, well, I looked at him, I was like, yeah. I don't want to fight you, I'm in New Zealand. No, I just want to have a quick log, and then we'll, we'll oh, talk about, yeah, 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 ta. Okay, yeah, now you've done that a beauty, mate. You're gonna need some stitches, some sutures, okay, to yeah, close it, because at the moment, if you, look, if you look at my lip, it's cut from the inside all the way through. So if you don't get it, if you don't get it seen to, you're gonna have a permanent gap in your, in your mouth, which is not, which is yeah. not good, okay? Remember I fought four of you with eight stitches of Good on you, man. Despite their injuries, the two brawlers think there's room for more discussion. Sleep at night, bro, whatever makes you sleep at night. makes you sleep at night, man. I watch. What's your name, mate? Just on side. I'm done. See you later, see you in England, you little rat. Just a minute. Yeah. Sorry guys. Anywhere, anywhere it's comfortable, mate. I'm sorry about that. I just had to get out of my system. I was just like, can you put a cigarette away, mate? Okay, it's not even on. I want a little bit. No cigarettes in the vehicle. Okay. Oh, sorry. Put it in your pocket or something. Sweet ass, mate. What's your name? That feels better. I'm glad I got the last word. Oh my word, I feel brilliant. I'll lay down. I'll lay down for you. Okay, sorry guys. Brayden, just 10 turn it if you need it, okay? And I think my cheekbones fractured as well. Did you get a, a punch to the face? I got a kick to the a face. A kick. And a kick to the lip as well. I just got stitches about a couple months ago in my lips. Okay. 
and I was on my knees and he kicked me square in the mouth. Instead of spitting out blood. We can get, get you a lift up to the hospital. However, what I don't want is the both of you to be in the same hospital causing issues, particularly if he's going to kick yeah, off no, and start fine. yelling and screaming. I'll try to sleep it off. Right. And if it's too much in the morning, then I'll just shoot off in the morning. Sure. So that should be nice and cool there. And if you just hold that on your on the side of your cheek. Thanks for that. Yeah. You're very welcome. All right. Take care. Is it all right if I take this one? Of course you can. Cheers, thank you. No worries. With the brawlers now separated, Jay, Braden, and Nick take off a hospital with a still seething young man in the back. What a little rat. I know I stole his wallet and his phone and his national insurance card. That's a paper rat. He's being assaulted because he stole someone's wallet, but it's still the other person's fault. I'm I'm this is what we call fun. This I am living the dream. <laughs> this is the dream. Alright, mate, you just jump out the back door. Alright, sorry, guys. Alright, we're done. Oh, that's done. Just about. Yeah. Got like Never drink before doing your makeup, kids. Underwear on first. Thank you, thank you. Be safe. We will. Otherwise, we'll call you. And I'll stay we'll be here. tequila because I don't want to even have <laughs> That's good. The students have gone from orientation to disorientation and back again as they settle in for another year. But for now it's 4.30 in the morning and while the party carries on for some, the night has come to an end for our street hospital team. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.